Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Here's my top 10 personal favorite Richard Donner movies. Yes, Richard Donner is a great director. He's been directing movies since the 1970s, and I'm a big fan of his, so I thought, I thought what the hell, let's count down my top 10 personal favorite Richard Donner movies. All right, and before a top 10 list, you gotta have your honorable mentions. I only have two honorable mentions for Richard Donner's movies. And those two movies are Conspiracy Theory and Lethal Weapon 4. Yes, those are both enjoyable movies, but they just couldn't make the top 10 list. But with David, my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Lethal Weapon 3. Yes, Lethal Weapon 3 kind of got worse as they kept going, but at the same time, I love every Lethal Weapon movie, and Lethal Weapon 3 is a great movie. I enjoy it. This is more of a comedy movie. This is the more comedic Lethal Weapon movie. This introduced Rene Russo, who has great chemistry with Mel, with Mel Gibson, and this movie had more Joe Pesci in it, and he's hilarious. Cut. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, the villain isn't as strong. It's a pretty much a generic action movie villain, but Riggs and Murtaugh are back. Come on, Riggs! I'm getting old for this shit, Riggs! And yeah, I love them. I love Martin Riggs. I love Val uh, Murtaugh. Danny Glover, Mel Gibson, both fantastic. Great chemistry. The comedy's great. The action's great. And I love Lethal Weapon 3. Some people say it's their least favorite, but I enjoy it. It's my third favorite, and it's my tenth favorite Richard Donner movie. Coming to number 9 is Lady Hawk. Yes, this is sort of a guilty pleasure because this is not even close to a flawless movie, but I enjoy it. I love its visuals. I love its fantasy element. I love Michelle Pfeiffer in this movie. I think all the performances are all pretty good. For fan movies like uh, Never Ending Story, uh, Legend, Goonies, all those kind of movies, you'll be a fan of Lady Hawk. I don't want to go into spoilers with this movie, but... If you're a fan of, like, fun adventure movies with some, some dark themes in it, uh, really dark themes in it, you'll enjoy it. Michelle Fiverr's good, the story's interesting, all in all, the performances are good, and it's just a fun Richard Donner movie. So, yeah, I love Lady Hawk. It's a good movie. Coming to number eight is The Goonies. Yes, The Goonies is another, I guess, child nostalgia, guilty pleasure, because this is another movie people don't really like. Well, a lot of kids like it. Well, a lot of people from my generation, people from the 90s and 80s, love The Goonies because they grew up with The Goonies. They have a lot of nostalgia for The Goonies, but some people find it really stupid, really annoying, not very well acted and stuff, but I kind of disagree because I think Goonies is a fun movie. I love how it's directed. I love these kid actors. Come on, you got Sean Astin and Josh Brolin in this movie, so yeah, and they're young in this movie, and they're both good, they're both great in the movie, and he also got Short Round from Temple of Doom, hate him in Temple of Doom, but I enjoy him in this movie, I love a lot of these characters, I love the story of One-Eyed Willy and his treasure, and all these kids going after this treasure, I love it, I love the villains in this movie, I don't know their names, but I know the girl, she's from Throw Mama from the Train, she's great in the movie, I love everyone in this movie, the fun the jokes, the action, the adventure, I love these characters, yes, Yes, they're very childish, but they're childish because they're fucking children. So yeah, they actually act like children. So I felt like I was actually watching real people go after this treasure because these are kids, so they act like kids. Corey Feldman's also in the movie, and he's hilarious too. But yeah, they act like real people in this movie, and that's why I liked it. It was funny, adventurous, and just has a lot of nostalgia for me. I enjoy The Goonies. Coming number seven is Scrooge. Yes, Bill Murray Scrooge. This is not my favorite take of the Christmas Carol story, but I like this movie. I think this movie's fine. It's not as good as the Jersey Scott Christmas Carol or a Muppets Christmas Carol. Those are my two favorite renditions of a Christmas Carol, but this movie's fine. I like it. Bill Murray pretty much steals this entire movie. He is freaking hysterical. He's great as the like the Scrooge character when he's such a dick to everyone. But then when he becomes nice and everything, it, you buy it. It's very believable. And everyone's great in this movie. I love the performances. I love the all the actors who play the three ghosts. I don't want to spoil who they are, but they're all very solid choices. And I love like the modernization of A Christmas Carol, because this, this is Christmas Carol in the modern times. Well, the modern times when this movie came out, which, what was this? Uh, early 90s, late 80s and stuff. And it feels like it's era. It does a very good job. The dark themes are great. A lot of, And a lot of the Christmas themes are really good and very magical. It does feel like you're watching a Christmas movie. Like I said, it's not the be best rendition of A Christmas Carol, but it's still a good movie. I enjoy this movie. I watch it every Christmas. And yeah, Scrooge, good movie. Coming number six is Maverick. Yes, Maverick. I love this movie. This is a Western comedy, and I love Western comedies. Whether it's like Blazing Saddles or Maverick, I love this movie. This movie is freaking hysterical. Mel Gibson stars in this movie with Jodie Foster and James Garner. The cameo of Danny Glover is probably one of the funniest cameos in a Western. It's so funny. I love that Richard Donner directed this movie. It is such a fun movie. This is probably one of the most funnest Westerns you'll watch. It's probably one of the most funniest 
funniest westerns you'll ever watch. Well, that and Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles is hysterical as well, but this movie's great. I love the story about this gambler going after this money and going to this poker game and all that shit. Alfred Molina is also in this movie as a bad guy. Great. I love all the poker scenes. I love all the scenes with, even with the natives. The scene at the ending with James Garner and the bathtubs. So many very iconic things. And again, this movie has a lot of nostalgia for me because I watched this movie when I was a kid and I still to this day watch it because it just puts a smile on my face all the time because it's Maverick. It's hilarious. Coming number five is Superman 2. Yes, Superman 2 was actually directed by two people. It was directed by Richard Donner and Richard Lester, but I am strictly going with the Richard Donner cut. Yes, this came out on DVD and Blu-ray like a while ago, and this is the only one I'm counting because I think it's the better version. So yeah, Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut is the one I'm counting. The Richard Lester one is good too, but this one's much better. It, the, the story is leveled out better, it's paced better, and it's just better in general. It's got better action, it's got better character development, better character interactions, and I enjoy this movie. Superman 2 may not be as good as its predecessor, but still a great movie. Yes, it's a bit dated, but it's awesome. I love Terrence Stamp as Zod. Kneel before Zod. Kneel. Son of jor -El. I just love him. I love him. I love all these villains. Like I said, they're dated, but the action's still fun. Gene Ackman is back as Lex Luthor. He just kills it. Chris Reeve is always Superman to me, and I love Chris Reeve in this movie. His chemistry with Margaret Kendler is much better in this movie, because this movie mostly focuses on on their relationship and how he gives up his powers to be with her, but then he realizes he has to save the frickin' world, so he needs his powers back and all that. It's good. There's a bit of a duo sex machina in this movie, just like the first one, but this one made even less sense than the first one, so it did bother me. That's probably like my only flaw with the movie is the duo sex machina at the ending. It's just what? Like, what the fuck happened? But yeah, still, this movie is great. I love its action, I love its characters, and this movie just feels like Superman. Coming number four is Lethal Weapon 2. Yes, it's just been revoked. Yes, this movie's darker and edgier than the first one. Does it make it better than the first one? No, I, I still like it though. It's great. I was a little nervous when I saw this movie a long time ago because I'm like, can this movie be as good as the first one? As it turns out, it can't, but it can still be a fucking great movie. I love Lethal Weapon 2. I love the villain in this movie. I love the chemistry between Riggs and Murtaugh. I love the scenes. I love the one-liners, especially the toilet scene with the bong. Great scene, and I just love it. Lethal Weapon 2 is one of the reasons why Lethal Weapon is a phenomenal franchise. Coming number three is The Omen. Yes, was this the first Richard Donner movie? This was like the first or second Richard Donner movie, and holy shit, fucking shit, this movie is terrifying. This movie is scary. It drips with atmosphere. It drips with tension. That kid in this movie is scary as shit. The performances in this movie are fantastic. How this movie is structuralized is just brilliant, just brilliant. The editing, the shots, the score, the atmosphere, everything about this movie, about this movie is just terrifying and just beautifully well done. This movie is phenomenal. If you love classic horror movies, you will love The Omen. Coming number two is Lethal Weapon. Yes, the first Lethal Weapon. This is one of my favorite action movies of all time. It's a great action movie. It's a great comedy. This is what started Riggs and Murtaugh. Riggs! Get too old for this shit, Riggs. I love this old guy. He's like this veteran cop, and he has to partner up with this young guy, played by Mel Gibson, who is a fucking lunatic. And you find out why he's a lunatic, because he has a dark past. He lost his wife. He's very suicidal. And I love that their partnership is what brings him back to, like, humanity. He actually wants to live and help people as a police officer, and it's just so powerful. This movie... It's not only a great action movie and a great comedy with great chemistry between its two leads, Danny Glover and Mel Gibson, but it's a very powerful, dramatic film, too, and it's a great crime movie, too. So, yeah, I love Lethal Weapon. It's one of my all-time favorite action movies, and it's my second favorite Richard Donner movie. And my number one favorite Richard Donner movie is Superman. Superman the movie, 1978. I love this movie. Chris Reeve, Margaret Kindler, Gene Hackman. Marlon Brando as jor is probably one of the best choices, even though he cannot say Krypton, the planet Krypton. I'm like, it's Krypton, goddammit. But I love the, the look of Krypton in this movie. I love the opening scene with uh, Zod and his men. They get banished to the Phantom Zone. You will bow down before me, and if not you, your ass. <laughs> Just so good. So over the top. So awesome. I love the backstory of Superman, the origin story of Superman. It's very well done, very justified to the comic book, and I love it. Christopher Reeve is Superman. 
He is Superman. He's great as Clark Kent, that loser reporter, and he's also great as Superman. Superman's sort of a boy scout. Yes, he's tough and badass, but he has a very kind and gentle side. And Man of Steel didn't show that. This movie does, and it's so freaking good. I love this movie. Sure, it's dated, and yes, it has the deus ex machina at the ending when he spins the earth around, but you can forgive it because this movie has comedy. It has heart, and it actually feels like a Superman movie. Superman 1, Superman 2 actually feel like Superman movies, but the first Superman movie is my favorite, and it's my favorite Richard Donner movie. So yeah, that was my top 10 personal favorite Richard Donner movies. So in the comments section below, in the comments section below, please tell me what is your favorite Richard Donner movie. Give me your top 10s. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.